everyone, welcome to my video where I make changes in a small open economy. Uh, yeah, this sort of culminates a few chapters of our book, most of the stuff that's in them. So let me introduce you to the model. We've got fixed capital and labor, which they're just given exogenously. And then we have a simple production function, capital times labor. And so there are a thousand units of production happening in the economy. Let me get the color in here. Government and taxes are fixed at 200 each. Consumption, I said it is 0.8 times disposable income. That's Y minus taxes. That's 1,000 minus 200 times 0.8, because that's 1,000, that's 200 times 0.8, is 640. Uh, let's see, savings is Y minus C minus G, which Y is 1,000. C we just solved for is 640, and G is 200, so savings is 160. We're investing at 800 divided by the interest rate. The world interest rate is fixed at $4, at 4%. Uh, we can't control it. That's what I mean by it being a small economy. So at that prevailing interest rate, we invest 800 divided by 4, $200. Now, notice... Savings does not equal investment. In a closed economy, they do. Uh, savers who lend money, investors who borrow money, reach an equilibrium together. But in this model with an open economy, we can borrow more than we lend. That just means that we're borrowing money from someone else. And that brings us to the concept of capital flows. Uh, net capital outflow is defined as saving minus investment, which in this case is 160 minus 200 is minus 40. That means we're borrowing $40 from overseas. So on a graph, it looks like this. You've got savings fixed at 160, investment along this curve. Uh, at the prevailing interest rate of our star, we've got 200 units of investment. 160 of savings, net capital flow is the gap between them. Next, net exports, exports minus imports. Our net exports is a function of our exchange rate. Uh, I made it 100 minus the exchange rate itself. And we know that we're supposed to get this in our model. And so I set the two equal to each other to get the equilibrium exchange rate. In this case, 100 minus E is equal to minus 40. That means E is 140, and it looks like this. One note is that this line is set according to this gap. That minus 40, that NCO, is this line. like that. That's the connection between these two graphs. And that'll make more sense when I start making changes in the model. So let's change it. First change, let's try a tax cut. Oops, I don't want it up there. I'm gonna leave capital, labor, everything else the same. I just wanna set a new T bar equals 100. So consumption is equal to 0.8 times 1,000 minus 100, which is 720 which means savings also changes. 1,000 minus 720 minus 100, or sorry, minus 200 is just equal to 80. Let's see, investment doesn't change. Uh, we haven't changed their behavior. We haven't changed the world interest rate, but we did change net capital flows is savings, 80, minus investment, 200. Our net capital flows now fell even farther to negative 120. Meaning instead of borrowing 40 from abroad, we are borrowing 120 from abroad. So what does that look like on this graph? That basically has the effect of lessening savings even more, which widens this gap 
even farther. Uh, now from there we can go even more. Let's go net exports equals net capital outflows. That's 100 minus epsilon equals minus 120. That's going to be epsilon equals 220. And so that, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have erased it yet. This shift up here, where we got this wider gap, is a leftward shift of this. Net capital flows decreased to negative 120. And that pushed up the interest rate, or sorry, the exchange rate to 220, meaning it now takes 220 units of the other currency instead of 140 units to purchase our good. Or sorry, to purchase a unit of our currency. All right. There's one set of changes in our economy. Let me clear up these graphs so I can do these next ones. Uh, next change, let's do in green just because, yeah. Let's say instead that we change the capital stock, we'll make it be 40. Well, it doesn't change L, but it just does change Y equals 40 times 40 equals 1600. And we can ignore the red stuff for now. Like we'll just have that be a totally different change. So I'm just gonna push all that somewhere else that we don't really need it. Okay, we'll just, there we go. So we can ignore the red stuff. We're going from the original model. Uh, so Y changed, G did not, T did not, C did. It equals 0 0.8 times 1600 minus 200 equals 1120, which means S changed equals 1600 minus 1120 minus 200 equals 280. Investment didn't change, it's still 200, which means our net capital flows, savings minus investment, it was 80, it's gone positive. This is now $80 lent abroad. So what does that look like on this graph? That's basically uh, increasing savings like this. So S equals 280. And now we've got more savings than investment and that gap is a positive net capital outflow. I didn't push the stuff down nearly far enough. I don't want any of it. All right, sorry about that. Now back to our uh, net exports. What's this gonna look like now? We've got a net capital outflow of 80. We'll set that equal to our net exports. So this is just exchange rate equals 20 units of the other currency buys one unit of ours. Net capital flows went from negative 40 to 80, which pushed our exchange rate down to 20. All right. So far, so good. I hope. If not, well, I can't really talk to you because you're in the computer. Uh, let's. All right, last change. Let's do one more. And this time we will change that interest rate. We're gonna leave capital, labor, everything else fixed. We're just gonna change our star and make it equal to. Well, this changes how much we invest. 800 over two equals 400. Uh, let's see, our savings originally was 160. So our NCO, net capital flows, at 160 
minus 400 equals 240. We're borrowing, oh sorry, minus 240. We're borrowing 240. Looks like we don't need any of that green on here. We're borrowing 240. Savings didn't change, but as the interest rate fell, looks something like this. Our interest, or sorry, our investment increases to 400, and the gap between 160 and 400 is now minus 240. How does that spill over into exports? Net exports, 100 minus the exchange rate is equal to net capital flows, minus 240. The exchange rate is now 340. What does that look like on here? Net capital outflows decreased to minus 240. And that gave us, there you go. So it's all connected. I, I told you it was going to be all relevant to some extent or another. You can also see why we have to make so many simplifications. The model's already really big. Uh, as we get to more advanced topics, we'll get rid of some of the bars and have more interchange between the variables. But for now, this is a pretty good start for us to see how changes spill over throughout the economy. I hope it was helpful to you. If not, too bad, I wasted your time anyway. Thanks for watching. Good luck, you guys.